Over the course of time that Rocket League has been out, there have been many arguments over the names of different mechanics or terms for things that happen in the game. Now, I'm not here to say that I have all the answers, but I wanted to talk about probably the most controversial argument in Rocket League. What is Rule 1? There are two different common opinions that people will argue against as to what Rule 1 is. Some believe that Rule 1 is when you're in a match against another player and you run headfirst into them, getting your two cars locked, you must stay this way until another player decides to ruin it by slamming into you, or one of the two teams scores a goal. Now, on the other hand, every match in Rocket League has 5 minutes on the clock before the game ends or goes into overtime. However, at 0 seconds, if the ball is off the ground, then the play can continue as long as the ball stays in the air. Keeping the ball up at 0 seconds no matter what is the other main argument as for the meaning of Rule 1. Now, which argument is correct? Personally, I don't think it matters too much, but I will say that many players will argue that it all depends on when you started playing. The people who started out from the beginning usually refer to Rule 1 as keeping the ball up at 0 seconds, whereas new players, who are great at bumping into other players, generally refer to staying locked with another car as Rule 1. Now, I started playing Rocket League day one, and I will say that keeping the ball up at 0 seconds definitely was a thing, but I never personally remember it being called Rule 1. It would go to 0 seconds and people would just shout, keep the ball up, keep the ball up, instead of, follow Rule 1, follow Rule 1. It was the original unspoken rule of Rocket League, so therefore, nobody spoke about it. I've also always noticed that a majority of EU players, more so than US players, refer to keeping the ball up at 0 seconds being Rule 1. So I will say that I can't personally speak from experience as to whether or not EU players did or did not use the term Rule 1 at 0 seconds or not. For all I know, many EU players probably said something along the lines of Oh, you best be keeping that ball up, bruv. It's rule one, it is, it is. Do my eyes deceive me? That pinch was bonkers. Now, I can say that I do remember personally from very early on in Rocket League, when players would have their cars locked, it was referred to as Rule 1. But with that, I'm not going to sit here and be that guy that says one is necessarily right or wrong, or you're dumb for thinking it's one or the other. But I will say that I personally do refer to keeping your cars locked together as Rule 1. So why bring this up in a video? Well, whichever rule you think is Rule 1, that's fine. But I want to say that I believe rules are meant to be broken. So now let's talk about the unspeakable. First, we'll go over keeping your cars locked. Many players think that this is just a simple thing in Rocket League, and there's nothing to it when it happens to you or one of your teammates. I'd say that's wrong. Keeping your cars locked can actually be very strategic. Say that you're playing with a friend in doubles, and you know that they're far better than you. If you happen to get in a Rule 1, staying in this Rule 1 could possibly increase your chances of scoring a goal on the opponents, because your teammate, who is a better player than you, can most likely handle it. Now, let's say the roles are reversed. Your teammate, who you know is better than you, gets locked into a Rule 1, and you've barely played any games of solo duel in your life because you hate ones. I mean, to be fair, if you're the only one on your team, then who do you have to blame if you get scored on? If you're the better teammate and you're locked into a rule one, probably the best option if you want to win would be to break this rule instead of leaving your teammate back to defend a goal that's bound to go in. There are a few ways you could go about this. You could just outright reverse out of rule one as soon as you lock cars, or you can make the most out of being in a rule one and time it to be the most beneficial for you and your teammate. If you're low on boost, you can wait out the rule one until the nearest boost pad spawns and break away towards that. Another scenario could be that if your teammate is on the attack and the other opponent not in a rule one is getting back to defend, you could break rule one and go bump the other opponent, leaving the net open for your teammate. There are many scenarios as to how you can break rule one, and some even apply to solo duel. Doomsy once broke an almost two minute long rule one as the ball rolled towards the opposing goal 
and it led to him tying up the match. Well, he's in the lead, so if we do this all game and he's won. All right, let's just wait until the ball falls in front of his goal, and then I'll half bet and score. I think I have to be, I have to just be close to the ball. That's when I have to do it. Because otherwise, I could beat him on reactions maybe. But he's always holding R2, so he's constantly going. I've just got to go for it. I've got to flick back right as well. Back right. For this half flip. Okay, here we go. I bet he'll break it before me. <laughs> oh, I can get this boost pad. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna do it now, I've got 40 seconds, ready? Three, two, one. Oh! We did it! <laughs> In the dumbest way! In the dumbest way! <laughs> he had so much boost! He had so much boost! Finally, I broke the stupid rule. I broke this damn rule. So before instantly breaking the rule, or just deciding that you're gonna stay in rule one, think it through and plan out the best approach for you and your teammates and break it when necessary. Now, I talked about one side of what people believe rule one is. So I figure it's only fair to talk about the other argument of keeping the ball up at zero seconds. Honestly, I think this rule can be and is broken very often. In many matches, keeping the ball up at zero seconds is very risky. Say you're only winning by one goal and you decide to keep the ball up. Well, this gives the other team more of a chance to score and take the game into overtime, possibly resulting in a loss for you and your team. There's not much point in risking it to respect this rule unless you have more than a one point difference or you're down by one, or you just want to be cocky and you're confident that you can score an extra goal at zero seconds. However, I do think that keeping the ball up when you're ahead by one goal, getting scored on, going into overtime, and losing the game can definitely be worth it if your teammate's been talking you the entire match. So, if you're willing to lose some MMR and give your teammate what they deserve by respecting this rule, then I say respect it. I'm not saying to throw your matches just because your teammate's toxic, but let's say you have a toxic teammate, and you're just innocently following one of the unspoken rules of Rocket League by keeping the ball up at zero seconds, when suddenly the other team scores on you. Well, oops. Nothing you could have really done. You were just following the rules. And can your teammate really be mad at you? for just innocently following some simple rules of Rocket League, even if it might have been the reason that your team lost. And besides, as the great Emily Dickinson once said, let me not mar that perfect dream by an auroral stain, but so adjust my daily night that it will come again. Or, to quote the wonderful Shakespeare, full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made, those are pearls that were his eyes, nothing of him doth fade, but doth suffer a sea change into something rich and strange. Now, I don't know what either of these have to do with Rocket League or Rule 1 or getting revenge on your teammate, but they sound smart as f <laughs> There are ways that are better than others if you want to break this rule, because it is smart to know how to break this rule effectively if you're only up by one goal and you want the win. Obviously, if the ball's gonna hit the ground at zero seconds and you're the only one around to hit it, just let it drop. But, say your opponent has the ball and is dribbling it with no time left on the clock. In most situations like this, the best way to challenge is by hitting the top half of the ball. Your opponent is trying their best to keep the ball on their car and they generally are gonna try and flick it over you. If you challenge high, you will either dunk them and the ball will hit the ground, or you'll most likely pinch the ball with the top of their car away from both of you usually resulting in the ball hitting the ground. Now I should say, Rocket League is situational, so this doesn't apply to every match. But most games where the opponent has the ball and you want to break rule one, challenge high. Regardless of which rule you think rule one is, I think it's nice that we can all come together and we can all agree, left goes on kickoff. If you break this rule without saying I got it or all yours, then I am not sorry if your teammate backs out within the first 10 seconds because this is one rule that is not meant to be broken.